Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Today I want to talk a little bit about the Democrat, uh, whatever you call it, I don't care. Um, when Obama, okay, we'll go back further. I make short little comments about each thing. When Bill Clinton talked about that the, the Oval Office is a command center and has dignity and everything else. Okay. Let's ask Monica Lewinsky if she agrees. Obama. Talked about how he was not, that President Trump was not taking the job seriously, you know, and really ribbed into him and criticized him. And you know what I remember during his last few days of his presidency, President Obama released a lot of international terrorists from Gitmo. And I remember when that happened. I said, oh my God, what is the man doing? Is he crazy? Letting all these terrorists out of Gitmo? I said, oh no, wait a minute. No, he's not crazy. He made a deliberate attempt. Obama made a deliberate attempt to make President Trump's work more difficult by having more we added on terrorists so that he has to capture them all over again. Okay. So basically what he did was he sabotaged, deliberately sabotaged President uh, Trump's presidency. It's like leaving a job and then as you walk out the door you throw a Molotov cocktail into the building. Okay. Bye. See ya. Let's see how you handle that. So I'm like and then he's talking about how how everybody's talking about how much of a failure he is. Well, guess who's at the heart of that? Nancy Pelosi. And all the Democrats. From day one, the Democrats fought against Trump, tooth and nail, and everything you wanted to do. They wanted so badly to make him fail. Sabotage his work. And I know more about that than anybody else. They sabotaged each situation to make him fail. I had two jobs like that. Where I'm doing a good job. And they wanted... They wanted to throw President Trump out of the Oval Office just as much as people want to throw me out of a job. Okay. And they did successfully. I lost my jobs. They sabotaged my job. They did everything they could to get me off the job. Just like the Democrats for three and a half years were trying to do to Trump. So in a way, I'm more akin to President Trump than I would have otherwise. Because since it happened to me, it's easy to see, it's easy for me to be a witness 
to see it happen to somebody else. So it's like, if you're a victim, let's say, you're a victim of domestic battery, you can see if another woman is going through the same thing you went through. Very easy to do. Um, you know, as someone who comes out of a situation, it's ingrained in your psyche. So when you see it happen to somebody else, it's very easy to spot. I said, oh my God, that looks familiar. Matter of fact, that is very close to home. So when I see the Democrats try to sabotage Trump's presidency, I'm like, I can see it. I said, uh uh, I saw that coming. Uh, they're doing to him what pe other people did to me. Because it's too familiar to me. So that's why I have a, a support Trump even more than ever. Because he's going through what I went through. And the name calling and the character assassination. They, my family did that against my last girlfriend. My family put my last girlfriend to character assassination as badly as the Democrats are doing to Trump. You know. And and they were talking about how uh, um, Biden makes a, made a great speech. Well, yeah, if you're reading off a teleprompter, you know, of course you make a great speech. But leave him up to his own devices. He's loving all over the place, confusing his wife and his sister, saying, we support truth over facts. And then they realize the mistake and they change it. We go from fact to fiction. So when I heard that, I said, oh, must have noticed that one. Cleaned it up and said, I don't know where you got that wrong, Joe, but I cleaned it up for you. Now you'll say what you were intended to say, which was fact over fiction, not truth over facts. So, but that is where you see the real person. Okay. It, think about Cyrano de Bergerac. Actually, that's a good that's a good comparison. What about Cyrano de Bergerac? Can we learn a lot of lessons from Cyrano de Bergerac? He's in love with this woman, but he's like hamana 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 when he gets anywhere near her. So what does he do? He stands out under his beloved's window, and someone's in the bushes feeding him lines. Right? Read the play. Watch a copy of the play. Cyrano de Bergerac. Sure. Um, oh, my beloved. Okay, say, oh, my beloved. My heart is with thee. Oh, my beloved. My heart is with thee. You know, or whatever it was, I didn't see the play. But I saw a little bit of something like that. Like on the Brady Bunch. <clears throat> Where I think Peter was uh, head over heels over this girl, but he was so awkward and clumsy, he couldn't get the words out. In a little bit, um, George Bailey was the same way. 
when Marty was trying to sort of like be his Cyrano, you know, and what came out, you are my density, you know. It's when you're not speaking directly from your heart and your mind, you, you know, are phony. You have to, even with the gaps. I'm honest with my shyness. I'm shy. Some may believe I'm not shy. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if all you out there didn't believe I'm a shy person. But I am. And it's like sometimes I'll say, uh, why are you so quiet? Um, well, I'm a little shy. I don't know what to say. See, being honest like that is so much better than being a phony and reading a script or or being coached to what to say. Think about Obama. People said, oh, he's a great speaker. Sure, when he's reading off a teleprompter, he's a great speaker. But I remember so many times when he was not reading off a teleprompter, he was like, um, 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 how many, how many states did he visit? Did he say, I think, 57? At one time, he said, I visited 57 states. I didn't, I think there were a couple I didn't visit, but I visited 57 states. This is what I'm talking about. <coughs> you really get to know the person when he or she is themselves. And they're not reading something prepared for him. And whenever I read off something, I tell you. I think there was one, or one time or two times that I said, um, I had to write this down, so please forgive me. I'm just, write, I'm just reading off my notes here. I'll tell you that. Then you know, I mean, this is one of the reasons I think why um, I am myself. Pauses. Um, okay. Okay. Well, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening in. I'll see you around. I'll see you soon. I to say that, right? <laughs> okay, take care, guys. I'll see you later. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you later. <laughs>